Hey guys, so we're live. I'm waiting for Jojo to uh, to come online. Hey Ems, love you. <laughs> okay, so Jody, I think you're in the house. I believe. Love you, Ems. Literally, Jode, right? How do I get you on here? Go live with Jody. Now I think that I should have you here. I love you, Emma. Thank you. <laughs> Jody! <laughs> How are you, my beautiful Bella? Very good, thank you. How are you? kids. I'm really well. Are you excited? How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, a little bit nerve. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's nothing to be nervous about. You're amazing. And this is why we're here. We're just gonna wait for a few more people to join and before we kick start, but I just feel like this is why we're here to celebrate you and your glory. So there's nothing to be like nervous about at all. We're literally just gonna talk about everything that you've overcome, everything that you've done. Hey guys, there's a few guys that have um that are just logging on. I think that's Christine. Hey Christine. Jody, can you actually see Jody like who's coming on line or not? Yeah, I can, yeah. Hi, Emma. Yeah, and who's waving? Yeah, nice. Okay, so we've got a few people that are joining, which is amazing. And I really, really appreciate everyone's love and support because this is our first, our first interview for Real Relevant and Right Now. And we've got the beautiful Jodie Eames with us today. So, um, hey, Curtis. She does look beautiful, doesn't she, Elle? Literally. She is absolutely shining, Jojo. <laughs> And I know that you were really nervous about this, but I'm just so happy that you agreed to do it because I just think you are one of the most inspirational, admirable per people I've known in my life. And I just feel like we need to let the world know just about everything that you do. So as I said, everybody, this is Jojo. Jo, give yourself a little bit of an introduction. Say hey to everybody that's here right now. Hi everyone, I'm Jodie um, from South Wales. I you won. Hey, hey. Uh, yeah, super excited to be your on your first session. Yes, and I'm mega excited. I'm so pleased that you're here. I'm so grateful because I feel like we're really going to empower some people today. And this is completely what Real Relevant and Right Now is about. So guys that are just joining, I've basically launched this YouTube channel. We're going to be going live on Instagram every Sunday, 7 p.m. And I just really wanted to create a space for people that are out there doing their thing whatever it is that is relevant to them, to just talk about it. Because I feel like we live in a society where, you know, we find it difficult to talk about things. And especially I even think, you know, on not just difficult things and obstacles that we overcome, but also achievements, do you know what I mean? That you want to make and all that, the things that you are achieving. I feel like sometimes we don't celebrate ourselves enough. So this is a platform where if you're out here doing your thing, you want to talk about it, you want to let the world know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk it out. So, uh, <laughs> Like I said, everyone, this is Jojo Eames. She's an amazing friend of mine. We met about, what, 12 years ago, maybe? Oh. I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about 12, 13 years ago, when we were actually both working in Greece on the party scene, weren't we? And just actually having a lot of fun in life, carefree. And uh, life has changed quite a bit now, hasn't it, Jo? Because there's not just you anymore, is there? No, oh, yeah, massive, massive changes. And I got little Maya now. Um, beautiful little Maya. Cool. So yeah, it's totally different to the lifestyle of Kavos partying on the street. Yeah. <laughs> and just living our best lives every day. <laughs> Hello. We... Sorry, just something popped up then. Hopefully it won't happen again. No, definitely. So Joe, over the last 12 years that I've known you, I've just, you've been like a complete powerhouse. So I don't know, should we take it back to kind of just before Maya was born and when you started in the pub? Like, let people know kind of what it is that you did, how you transformed your workplace, because what we're really going to be focusing on and talking about today, guys, is the fact that Jodie is such an entrepreneur. She's a single mum. She's always been so career-driven. And obviously, with that comes highs and lows, you know? Um, there's sacrifices need to be made, and that can be in time, in money, so yeah, I just feel like we need to reach out to a lot of mums out here, mums in general, single mums, and also just, you know, women that are career driven 
and just yeah hear Jodie's story and see what she's got to say so Jodie yeah let's let's take it back to just before Maya was born and how you started running the pub okay so um I got offered my first pub when I was 24 mm-hmm. so about two years before I had Maya um and I thought well I couldn't do any worse than what it was doing it was a local pub which I knew um mm-hmm. so yeah I took it on I grafted worked stupid hours probably 70 80 hours a week every week um built it up from scratch um over the four years i was running it all together i think we doubled the take-ins um won a couple of awards with it um yeah Yeah, because you were you not awarded with um the best manager award no award-winning manager for the pub no yeah so i had um three awards together there was um Best local community pub of the year, um, mm-hmm. highly, highly commended manager of the year, and um, highly commended customer experience of the year. So, um, and to come out of that pub that I I was given um, was a massive achievement because it was kind of a down and out locals pub where not many people went. Um, yeah, and then it became the heart of the community and a local. It didn't have like a bit of a bad reputation, and you completely like turned it around. Yeah, it did. Yeah, a really bad reputation. There was a lot of stuff (laughs) (laughs) and there but yeah we um we turned it around and then um it was it's a great pub where loads of people like to go now families um people uh, it's it's just a really nice community pub now um but it took a lot of work a lot of sacrifices um and it was hard after i had maya um you know my own and running a business but I just kept going through the motions. And for anybody out there, you know, that has children and is maybe in that situation where they're working, kind of, you know, what obstacles did you feel like you faced that, you know, really pulled on your heartstrings or you actually found so difficult to, you know, try and navigate or or balance with having a child but also running a business? Um, The balance is is the hardest thing. Um, Trying to balance personal life and work um running a business like a pub is kind of a lifestyle it's not really a job mm-hmm. 20 it's just around the clock isn't it yeah it's, it's totally a lifestyle and it's absorbed a lot of my time things would come up all the time which I had to cover or address and then that eats away at your personal time then which you don't get a lot of anyway um but yeah I sacrificed a lot of things I missed a lot of birthdays occasions like people friends had babies and stuff and I never got around to go in to visit them um, there's a lot of things I missed out on that I regret and but it's part of the parcel I guess with 100% that. and I also feel like that 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 famous quote is so uh well I just think it's so true you know there is no success without sacrifice you have to make sacrifices so I can kind of completely understand and relate with what you're saying in that sense you know missing kind of the daily things that you do with friends, whether it's going to birthday parties, christening, stuff like that, because, you know, you are effectively not only kind of breadwinner, you're also mum, you're also friend, you're also trying to be all of these different faces of the diamond, do you know what I mean? Which must be really, really difficult for you to um, just balance, like I say, you know? Um, but being such a career-driven mum, you know, like how has it affected you being locked it being in lockdown because I bet that that is completely kind of switched things up for you yeah um <laughs> spending most of my time at work um yeah. going to spending all of my time at home has been completely different um it was hard to adjust to in the beginning um being 24 7 mum 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 but we've got there in the end um but yeah I realize now how much of a a break work gives you from kids so (laughs) (laughs) miss it a little bit um you do yeah yeah but it's just trying to get like um a routine at home so as much as I'm not working now and it is just being at home with Maya it's getting a sure that you stick to that and getting a having the structure of the day done so it 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 helps it helps with people like me (laughs) completely and for anybody out there that kind of has gone from being this you know real career driven woman mom that's out there you know like working five days a week doing their thing to now completely corona hitting switching up life and you all of a sudden being 100 percent mum. what are some of the obstacles that you feel you faced um 
you're just not used to being in constant demand um not having the headspace to think really because um, mm -hmm. you don't really get much time to think with kids around um at least when you're at work you can go sit in your office or five minutes or go on your lunch break or whatever Can't exactly yeah no of course from your kid um <laughs> But yeah, it's just it's just adapting to it because it is very demanding um, and I can't wait to get back to work. Really? Just to have a bit of your... No, I completely must understand because also having like a four-year-old, I suppose you're... It's like you're constantly having to entertain as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I know Myra is such a beautiful little girl and she's very independent, isn't she? And I know she can like keep herself occupied, but effectively, like you say, it's 24-7. There's no kind of break where you know, she might be at nursery or she might get knackered with her friends and all these kind of things that are going on. What do you feel like, what skills or kind of what routines is, or has routine been something that you've had to create to kind of keep a balance in life? Do you know what I mean? And, and kind of keep your sanity. Yeah, so um, the first few weeks were hard because it was kind of, you don't know what to do with yourself, getting up whenever, eating whenever, going to sleep whenever. Um, who what was... day is it? <laughs> it's yeah. just like everyone was just like <laughs> her routine, like totally changed as well. Um, and with the lighter nights and everything, she was staying up to like nine, ten o'clock at night. Um, so a few things I did, I ordered blackout curtains, which was one. Um, <laughs> I love that. Got her into bed. Um, and then I started just building my own routine in the mornings to make sure I get up. Um, she joins me for a morning workout. We have breakfast together. We do an activity. We have some lunch. And then the afternoon is kind of our separated activities. So she usually likes to get and watch a YouTube. And if the weather's nice, I'll go outside. But um, that's our kind of structure of the day. Um, but it's breaking it up as well and putting a bit of fun in it throughout the day. So she um, she's obsessed with pranking videos on YouTube. <laughs> them. So... Um, it's like when she goes to the kitchen to get something and then shouting into her, the floor is lava. And then she's pegging it back into the living room to try oh, and... Oh, bless her. Thing. But things like that just make it a bit more fun for him being stuck at home. Completely. And I think something that you just said, which I think is so beautiful, that I'm guessing probably if COVID hadn't happened and this whole lockdown wasn't going on, you know, you and Maya being able to train together and exercise. Do you know what I mean? Every day, that must be like... I don't know, do you feel like your guys' bond has got stronger? Yeah, 100%. We've got a much better bond than what we did before. Mm. Um, and I feel like I know her little personality a hell of a lot better. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been great at home, but you just need that little separation, don't you? So she's missing her friends at school. She's finding it really tough. She misses her boyfriend, Freddie. Oh, bless her. Um, but yeah, it's just trying to keep her busy and her mind occupied. Yeah, no, completely. <laughs> I get it. Um, and so, Joe, let's talk a little bit about kind of some of the things that you've accomplished whilst being a single mom and juggling everything. So we've spoken about, obviously, you in the pub and you completely kind of turning things over and really, I suppose, being like a beacon of light within your community because I'm sure that you've got such a wicked reception from people around you. Like, do you feel like there's a real community where you live? Because obviously... I'm based in London and community is a bit sparse, I suppose, around here where there's so many people. But where you are in Cumbran in Wales, you know, it's a much smaller, smaller village. So has that been something that has kind of helped you in your career in the essence that, you know, you're, you're giving so much, but you're kind of, I suppose, must you receive stuff back from the people that you live with or the people from the area? Yeah, like the community around here is amazing. It's it's totally different to London um, and everybody really supports each other and it is great. Um, yeah. And everything I did was, I I was driven by feedback and the fact that it was it made a place for people to go um, and spend time together and enjoy themselves in a nice environment. Um, so yeah, that certainly is a driving factor that, you know, having a great communi community and stuff. Yeah, no, completely. And so set aside from the pub, because I know that this is just one of your ventures, like <laughs> tell everybody that is kind of out there listening and, and stuff, you know, some of the other things you've accomplished, because I know that not long ago you started a beauty company. I think it's number uh, 21 Aesthetics. Is that right? Yeah. So I started that a few months ago, just as something on the side that I 
I'm passionate about. Um, I haven't touched beauty for years. I trained when I was 16, 17. Um, but it was something I wanted to go back to. So I did yeah. extra training and then started it up. And it's been really, really popular, really busy, um, booked up every month. Um, and yeah, I've done loads of stuff over the years with charity. We did some fundraising in the pubs. Yeah, because that's going to lead us on to, obviously, Maya's Pancake House, which is, you know, something you've started in lockdown, which I just, again, I commend you. Like, you are, always, you are one of those people that you just constantly move forward. Like, no matter what kind of comes up in front of you, what obstacles there are, it's never like, ah, I'm not going to get through this. It's always like, how am I going to get around this? Like, am I going to jump? Am I going to take a quick left or right? Like, you're always, always giving. And I think that's something that is so beautiful about the person that you are. Um, but yeah, so the charity work and stuff, because I know that you started Maya's Pancake House and you have been raising money for the NHS. So tell some of the guys like what you've been doing during lockdown and yeah, just the amazing person that you are and how you've been try trying to raise money for the NHS. Um, so I started selling pancakes um, from the house to raise funds for the NHS. Mm -hmm. But also um yeah, it I've... says the flapjacks are banging <laughs> <laughs> um i've also it, it's basically because i was writing a menu for my new job working with the leisure centers um so i was in the process of writing a menu for the cafes and the pancakes was something that i was going to introduce to the menu okay. um, so what i'm also doing at the same time is building that customer base so when i go back to work if it is difficult when we go back because we don't know what it's going to be like mm -hmm. i've built a customer base to bring back with me um, which is amazing like talk about proactively thinking forward trying to trying. yeah a hundred percent joe just smashing it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's great we've had some really good feedback and everyone seems to be enjoying it and it's nice to raise money but while giving a treat to people as well at the same time yeah completely and just you know i suppose in a time like this which has been so just weird for everybody hasn't it i think it's everyone's kind of up and down up and down and i just think it's you know you've found something that is actually quite a you know it's a simple uh concept it's not difficult but it brings so much joy to yeah. people do you know what i mean because it's like anyone can make a pancake at home cool but the fact of the matter is in this time where you know we can't go out for pancakes or we can't go out for a drink to be able to just to drive to you and get some of your beautiful pancakes which if any of you have not checked out Maya's Pancake House like I know we live in London so we can't get a delivery but they look so delicious like you are very talented and, and you're so creative Jode with all that you do but they look amazing and I've seen that you've had such a response and considering you only started this what maybe three weeks ago weeks ago yeah and you've already got like x amount of followers like how much money have you raised to date charity wise um ish about 300 pounds in three weeks like but that is absolutely amazing that's obviously after taking out costs and everything to set it up yeah no but that's absolutely amazing joe like you're always on the go and obviously this isn't the only kind of charity work you've done again like tell some of the people about some of the stuff i know you were over in sri lanka not long ago well last year weren't you raising money yeah so i did um 10 days in sri lanka for Mary curie um mm -hmm. i did Cardiff Half Marathon, the Welsh Three Peaks in 24 hours. Um, What's that? You have to climb them in 24 hours? Yeah, three three Welsh mountains in 24 hours. Blimey. Um, did the T-Taff Trail, which is a 26-mile bike ride. Yeah. Uh, climbed the height of Snowdon on a climbing wall. There's <laughs> loads of like, random charity fundraising events I've done. Just because I was so busy with work, it would, it would give me something to look forward to as well. Literally, and like Emma has just commented, you're a super mum. <laughs> like, literally, Jodie, like, I actually think that you are, like, one of the world's superheroes. And you know what? I bet there are so many women out there that have that same kind of energy and that same kind of vibe because, you know, you're not only mum, you're dad as well, effectively, and you're the breadwinner. You're also giving to your community. You're also raising money for charity. Like, do you ever feel sometimes that you can completely lose yourself and like burn out because that must be so hard like how do you juggle everything and keep everything kind of moving um i don't really know <laughs> <laughs> i 
it's it's hard to it is hard to juggle and sometimes I do sit there and think oh why have I decided to do something else on top of everything else I'm doing um but I've just got to keep I've just got to keep doing I've got to be doing something I can't just sit back and like I really watch the telly I really sit there I'd rather talk to people or be doing something around the house or doing something proactive um but yeah I think it's I don't know I don't know answer my pants no completely and do, but do you feel like some of that comes from I don't know like do you ever feel like you kind of put a pressure on yourself? You know, like being a single mum, do you feel like you have to achieve all these things? Or do you feel like this is just something that's in you? Like, it, you know, you would just have that kind of get up and go, let's keep it moving. I've got to get things going. Um, I think it's partly, it's the way I'm wired partly. And I think <laughs> partly it is a strive to survive kind of mechanism. So I never really had the equal relationship you know, from years, over the years, I've never really had that. Um, so it, it's kind of, I've had to do everything and bring any, everything into the table and provide. And yeah, I've never, I've never cut short on what I want to do in my life or, you know, I've lived my life. I've spent my money. I've done what I wanted to do and mm -hmm. never worried about money, but like you've created that freedom for yourself. But yeah, yeah, basically. No, completely. And do you feel like, Obviously, where you are so busy and there's so many things that you kind of have to do to keep things moving in the household, do you know what I mean? Do you ever feel like you have sacrificed maybe time with Maya? Like, how have you juggled things like that? Because I know sometimes it must be really difficult when you've got a million and one things to do, but you also want to spend some quality time with Maya. Like, how and what? How have you kind of overcome those obstacles? Um, I have I have spent a lot of time with her. Um and there's no way around it really I did sacrifice a lot but then mm -hmm. I guess you've got to sacrifice some stuff to to accomplish things um but we're definitely making up for it now um yeah did it with the support of my family um I've 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 helped it I just got to be doing something or if, if work is struggling and they ask for my help I'll help them you know, I've always I've always covered shifts, supported where I'm needed, and it's kind of like if you ask for my help, I'm going to give it to you. Um, yeah. Over the years, um, I can see Jordan's on here as well. Uh, Jordan used to work for me as well. Hey Hi. Jordan. Hey Indra. Hey Kelly. Hey some of the guys that are tuning in. Really, really love the fact that you guys are logged in and logged on. Just for anyone that has joined, this is Jodie Eames, and we're talking all about kind of her being a career-driven mum. Also, just being like a complete superwoman. So, yeah, sorry to cut you, Jode, but yeah, carry on what you're saying. <laughs> well, I'm glad Jordan's here actually, because Jordan is one of my little cherubs. So, um, yeah, it's like when I when I see these incredible like young people come into the business and they've got something about them, or they, you know, you can see they've got it in them to do well. Or I see a little bit of myself in them. I do invest a lot of time, develop them, bring them up to where they where they can be and show them their capabilities. Um, mm -hmm. I know I can be hard to work for, um, <laughs> but you know, whenever they leave, they always say they appreciate what what I did or how I did it because then they come out the other side and they think, oh damn, I did that. <laughs> yeah, and you just set, made a comment that said you can be hard to work for, like how? Like, give us an example, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I've been told I'm quite strict. Uh, okay. I do push people past their lip to their limits, um, but then they always succeed more than the what they would have if they didn't. So um, I'll push and push and push. But if somebody like breaks down, like I just can't do it anymore, and I'm sure a couple of them have done that, um, I will step back and be like, right, that's fine. Let's move forward from it now and take a step back. But I and do you feel like that comes from because that's your drive and your energy, and it's like you kind of want your whole team to be, you know, to get the the ship off the ground and sailing or whatever or the rocket in the sky you yeah. kind of for you you need everybody to be on their game yeah that's, that's obviously it's difficult when you've got a team of people yeah no that's exactly it and I feel like I I inherited the training from experience okay so, um one of my first manager jobs I mean my boss was hard to work for he was very <clears throat> um and he would question every time we opened the business, he would question everything I did. 
um, I don't think we're ready. And I'd be like, yes, we are. No, we're not ready. And I'd have to run around and check because I know I've missed something and he's picked up on it. It was always attention to detail. You know, I had to get it right first time. Um, and I think from that experience and coming out the other side and looking back and thinking, well, actually, I know he was hard work, but I appreciate it because it pushed me past my limits and I became better at what I did. Completely. I try and use that training technique on people that work for me to try and bring them up. Yeah, and you know what? It's so funny you say it completely in kind of a different, uh, complete different sector of work, but I suppose in industries. But I, can, I feel like I can so relate with what you've just said because when I first moved to London as a 17-year-old girl, like, ah, I need to make money, I started a job with Morgan Stanley and I was actually working on reception for them. And because of Morgan Stanley and the company that they are, you know, our clientele were tip top. So everybody had to be tip top. You know, we had suits that were dry cleaned on site. We couldn't leave with our uniform on. If somebody entered the room, you had to stand up. And it was so corporate. But because I was trained to such an elite level effectively within that sector, not that I'm saying all my jobs thereafter have been easy, but in the sense that it's kind of when you are really kind of pushed to your limits, where sometimes you're thinking, this is ridiculous. Why are you making me do this? But then later on in life, as you've said, it's actually been so beneficial because I'm like, I completely get it. Like now I understand. Back then I didn't. Sorry. Raise your standards. Completely. So it's like you set a level for yourself, don't you? Like I am someone that I have high standards in all that I do in life. Do you feel like you do as well? Yeah, completely. And it's, so it's kind of like as well, do you feel like when you're saying you kind of push people to their limits and you want them to hit those high standards, it's more so not because you're like a horrible mean boss or anything like that because you're not, but is it more so because you see the potential in people and you want to bring it out of them? Yeah, 100%. Completely. And do you sometimes find that frustrating when you can see a potential in somebody, but they just don't, they can't see it themselves? Yeah, no, definitely, because you know that they can do better. And it's hard, isn't it? Especially, I think, when you're a leader or in any kind of managerial position, because that person is also on their own journey, their own journey of growth or whatever it is within their life. So it's kind of like, again, creating this balance of how far do I push you and what can I do that's, you know, going to still remain professional, but I'm going to get the best out of you. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, no, I really, really... Um, I really, really love that that is your vibe. And that's, I mean, since I've known you from day one, I know your standards have always been, you're always like, Kirst, I'm going to do this or I'm about to do that. And I'm just like, whoa, girlfriend, you need to sit down, chill the hell out and just take like five minutes for yourself. But you are always on the go. And I find that, you know, just even seeing the achievements that you've done over the last kind of 12 years that I've known you, Joe, it is really inspiring to me. Do you know what I mean? And especially because you do have a four-year-old little girl I just think to myself, when I, you know, like, I don't know, not that, never, never would I say that you want to compare yourself to anybody, but you know, like on days when you're thinking, oh, you know, I wish I was doing this, or you just haven't got the motivation. People like you in my life, I look to, because I think, no, nah, like, if Jodie's doing it, I, I need to get my ass up and I need to do it. So I'm very grateful for you, period, honestly, because, yeah, you've achieved so, so much. So let's just break it down for anybody that's just joined in. We started with the pub. What was the pub called? Uh, the first one was the Blink and Owl, the second one was the Greenhouse. You completely renovated that. You did so much charity work. Yeah. Raised money, completely turned that over. Yeah. Then we started the second business, Number 21 Aesthetics. Yeah. Now we're at Myers Pancake House. But yeah. you're no longer at the pub, right? So we've got 21 Aesthetics and Myers Pancake House. I left the pub in August. Um, I'm okay, so recently. Yeah in charge of events and catering um, but I'm currently furloughed so I'm doing Maya's Pancake House while I'm furloughed while you're furloughed okay and is there any advice that you could give any mums single mums career driven mums or just mums in general who have also kind of been in the same situation where they've been so career driven to now being in lockdown 100% mum like are there three tips or three pieces of advice that you feel you could give to them that may just help them, inspire them, you know, if they're feeling like they're a bit stuck or in a pickle? Um, I would just say the three things that are important is routine, which we talked about, having that routine with the kids. Um, the routine is number one. 100% most important thing. Um, just being creative or spontaneous around the house, making things fun, you know, act like a big kid yourself, have a bit of fun with them. 
release um, the inner child yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I guess just ask yourself some questions so I would say things like you know what have you always wanted to do that you never had time to do is there anything new you want to learn is there anything you want to achieve yourself you know whether it's you want to start doing yoga or you want to learn a new language or you know anything that you've wanted to do um my mm -hmm. goal for myself was to get fit um and I've lost a stone since lockdown, so. Amazing, Jode. Well done, literally. I'm very, very proud of you. But that's, that's my personal goal for myself. And then I have that time to focus on that when Maya goes to bed and think, right, what am I doing tomorrow? What's my plans? What am I eating? Making healthy food fun. Because everyone's saying, oh, I haven't stopped eating. And lockdown, they make something nice be to compensate for how rubbish they might feel. They think, oh, I'll make a nice tea and it's really fatty and pour in with cheese or something which is mm. but um you know have some fun with making healthy meals and trying to think of what else you can make you know yeah no completely and i think something that you just uh, checked uh well kind of touched upon there was you know when maya goes to bed like when do you get time to give yourself some self-love because right now where you kind of are not doing business and working as such and you are a hundred percent mum you know, it is really important, like self-love and taking time for you is so important. So I don't know about you, but there's times when I've had so much, I suffer from burnout. And, you know, so for me, I've had to implement into my daily life, like my meditation. And, you know, even if it's just 10 minutes for myself, I think it's so important. And I think that, you know, it must be really hard to kind of, again, get that balance as a mum. But being in lockdown and you know, you're now 100% mum. How have you been able to kind of get time for yourself? Is it when Maya goes to bed? Is it during the afternoons, like you say, when you have your um, separate activities and stuff, which I think is absolutely beautiful, by the way. That's a really lovely way to just put it. I think that's really lovely. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of mummy and daughter time in, in the morning, and then you go do what you want to do, whether it's ransack my, my makeup or lose the kitten in the bathroom, whatever it might be. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, you kind of having your time to chill out some both. Yeah, what is it that you do to kind of make sure you get that time for yourself? Um, but, yeah, the afternoons when I do my own separate activity and she watches her YouTube channels. Um, and then in the evenings when she goes to bed um, is a time when I sit down with a glass of gin and wind, think about what I want to do the next day. A big glass of gin. A big, very big, a big glass of gin. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I just once a week I have a pamper myself just to make myself feel good because I think everybody feels good after a little pamper. Making mm -hmm. sure I'm aside for for things like that. And that's important for you to kind of keep staying, keep grounded. Mm -hmm. No, nice. And if you could give any mums out there that are in a similar situation to you, like now with how you've coped with this transition, Jode, of going. You know, being a career mummy to 24, I mean, a career mummy to 24 7 mummy, like what pieces of advice would you give anybody else that is in a similar situation to you that could be struggling or, you know, just finding it all a bit too overwhelming? I mean, I know we're like nine, nine weeks in, but it still feels as heavy as kind of as it did, you know, when we first started. Yeah. Um, I guess just be patient and fight fun things to do with them because I mean you usually find that if you're not doing activities with them or you're trying to just keep the house tidy or stay on top of chores or all the boring stuff um they, their minds are bored so then they, they're nagging 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 they're on at you all the time because they want entertaining mm -hmm. so I finding things to do and not just things you can do together but things that they can do on their own as well um, yeah but yeah, making things fun, just being creative, acting a big kid. And like when you get more into that role, they're more settled and more satisfied. And then you find that you get a little bit more peace of mind because you're not being called mum every five seconds. <laughs> no, 100%. So it's kind of like, again, creating this balance. Mm. You know, I think balance is key. And it's really difficult, I suppose, to create balance in what you're doing because every day is different. Yeah. Every day is completely different. Um, so just going back to Maya's Pancake House, which is what we're here to talk about as well. You're the newest business on Jodie's list, <laughs> the entrepreneur that she is. Um, so how have you kind of managed to work that with having Maya at home? 
like how have you managed to kind of balance that out and get your orders done and um i only do the collections friday to sunday and then she goes to visit her dad friday to sunday okay uh, nice so i use that time on my own to do the work side of things um it gives me that satisfaction as if i'm working even though i'm doing it for charity so mm -hmm. uh, yeah just when she's not here really so when she's not here, that's when you can kind of get time to focus in on the business, do what you're doing for charity. And do you feel like that kind of re-energizes you? Because you're doing what you love. You are such a busy business woman, you know, being able to implement that back into your life. Do you feel that that has maybe changed, you know, added something positive to your mental attitude? Do you know what I mean? Whilst being in, in lockdown, do you feel like it's serving you in a good way? It gives me great satisfaction. Yeah. <laughs> and I know what to do we can. You know what, sorry. I know what day it is on the weekends. Nice. So it kind of gives you, yeah, because all the days are just merging, aren't they, at the moment? You just never know what's going on. Yeah. No, that's really beautiful. So just, again, let everybody know, kind of, I've got, again, you're based in Cumbrian, which is in Wales, but just let anybody know out there that's listening that may be near you how they can kind of get in contact and kind of what Myers Pancake is, House is all about. Um, so it's just providing pancakes, uh, flapjacks, brownies and um, all the funds are raised for the NHS and they can get them from the page on Instagram which is called Maya's Pancake House. Amazing and what they just make an order, they contact you? They can just message the page and place an order. Wicked and then you basically make to deliver or no make to collect. Yeah. yeah collection obviously we can't deliver in this time can we? No, but Jodi, I also just want to say, like, I really want to celebrate the things that you've done. And I just feel like this is another reason as to why we've got you on, you know, Real Relevant and right now, this new YouTube channel, because I feel like we don't necessarily have, well, we do, there are outlets, but I just really want to celebrate ordinary people that I know that are out here doing their thing, hustling hard, put pen to paper, letting the art, right, I don't know who that is, but I love you. <laughs> um and yeah just that are out here doing their thing like it really it must just i don't know for me i just want to raise everybody and i feel we all need to like rise and rise higher and i just really want people to see all that you've done and for anybody that is in a similar position where they are a single mum you know they have been career driven or even if you are just a mum you know what if there's one thing that you could say to inspire anybody in your position what would it be um just that there there are no limits. Um, if I love that. If there's something that you want to achieve or something you want to do, there's no reason why you can't do it. Um, the only person that stops yourself is yourself, really. Um, Amen. Got to take a massive leap and it done. Oh, I think we lost you then. Say that again, Joe. You just got to take a massive leap and go for it. So there are no limits. Basically, you can achieve anything. Sell it. Um, if you care about what you do, you can sell it to anybody around you. A hundred percent. Because I think that's a key thing with everything that I've ever known you to do. You have such a passion behind it. Yeah. Do you feel like that is a massive driving force for you? Yes. I am super passionate about anything that is in my life. Um, yeah. No matter what it is, um, passion is the ultimate driver in my life. I love that. And, well, you heard it here first, guys. There are no limits. Do you know what I mean? Jodie is out here. She's a single mum. She's got three businesses. She's created a new business in lockdown and she's raising money for the NHS. Like, if that is an inspiration or motivation for you to get up and do whatever it is that you're believing in or that you really want to achieve, then I don't know what it is because I just think you're an absolute... Like, I commend you, literally. Bow down to thy Jodie. Because <laughs> you are an absolute superhero. And I so love that you've come on here. And would you be happy for anybody that maybe hasn't reached out or hasn't asked any questions, you know, to maybe contact you on Insta or maybe contact me to get in contact with you? Like, would you be helped to maybe just give some advice or just talk to anybody that may be in this situation and is struggling to just reach out and say, hey, like, how did you overcome this? Or how did you start your business? Like, would you be happy to do that? Yeah, 100%. I'm happy to speak to anyone. Amazing. And I just want to say, Curtis down here says, well done. Well done, Joe. Proud of you. So you've got a lot of fans, which is amazing. So yeah, Joe, just give everybody your Instagram, your Facebook, so they can contact you. So um, yeah, my Instagram is at Jojo Eames. Um, and my Facebook is Jodie Eames. And just spell that for anyone that doesn't know, just in case. 
M E S. E M E S. Because yeah, I've known you for twelve years, and I'm like, what is it? M's E's. Furious. No. Say that again. I'm absolutely furious. You asked me how to do my. I'm sorry. I love you. Never ever. I mean, please forgive me. But no, guys, thank you so much for just joining in and supporting. Real relevant and right now. And Jody, you're a star. Look amazing from Chelsea. Jordan says, Jody, you're a star. And I just hope that anyone that's listened into this conversation has maybe resonated with something or taken something away from amazing energy. Can't wait for next week. This is wicked. Like, I just really love the fact that you are my first guest on the show and you're an absolute amazing queen. You are somebody that I just think always empowers people around you. You empower me. Um, and hopefully we've empowered people that have joined into this uh, uh, and, and logged on to, to, to Insta Live. Do you know what I mean? And I just think I'm really, really proud of you. And thank you so much. Boom. <laughs> and, um, yeah, guys. So we'll be back next week, 7 p.m. And we've got a completely different guest. I'm going to have Dre Scuffs on the show, who is um, a hip hop artist from New Jersey. So, yeah, we're going to be talking all things music and what's going on over there. So it's going to be very different to this show. But just once again, thank you so much, Jojo. I love you so much. And um, you've been amazing. And we will speak soon. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.